Thanks for everyone joining us tonight. Um, my name is Lauren and I am a program associate at Fractured Atlas. Uh, we definitely appreciate the new and prospective members taking the time out of their busy schedules to learn about our program and services tonight, especially after a long, hopefully a very cheerful uh, Christmas holiday. Uh, members who proactively learn about our fiscal sponsorship policies and procedures have an easier time using our program to raise money. So this is very, very helpful. Um, I hope that everyone can hear me okay. If at any time my voice cuts out, please chat me using the Zoom chat functionality. Um, in fact, uh, would someone mind chatting me a confirmation that they can hear uh, the sound of my voice in the Q&A? Or chat? Great, thank you guys so much. I also wanna point out uh, that tonight we are using caption access to provide attendees with closed captions and video remote American Sign Language interpretation or VRI. Uh, this is a part of our effort to better serve uh, deaf and hard of hearing artists and the disability community at large. Tonight our ASL interpreter is Crystal Kramer and our ID certified interpreter and our captioner is Cindy Kim. If you have any questions about Fractured Atlas's accessibility work, please feel free to contact us after the webinar. There will be an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the presentation, but feel free to chat me questions as we go. If it's relevant, I will stop and answer. Otherwise, I will save your questions to the end. Tonight's webinar is being recorded, so don't worry as well. Uh, don't feel like you need to take copious amounts of notes. I will email you a link to the recording later this week, and you're welcome to share it with any of your friends or collaborators who you think might benefit from this info. Now, let's start with while you're here. Likely you've got a great idea to create art, right? Like maybe you're a filmmaker working on a passion project or you're a choreographer trying to start a new dance company. Perhaps you're a visual artist looking to create a new installation, or you're an educator who wants to start training the next generation of artists. Either you're trying to, one, create an artistic project, or provide an artistic service but you're not sure how you can pay for it. Art projects are typically funded three different ways. You can pay for your artistic expenses yourself. If you were able to create your art entirely out of pocket, likely you wouldn't be here. So if this describes you, feel free to leave this chat at any time and this webinar at any time because every other artist in America probably hates your guts. You can get other people to pay for it, perhaps by selling your products or a service to them, or by having them invest in your project and offering them a share of the profit in exchange. Unless you're a Hollywood film director or Broadway producer, it's unlikely that you're able to finance your project through sales or for-profit investment relationships alone. However, or, you can seek charitable nonprofit sources of support by soliciting donations from individuals, sponsorship from businesses, or grants from foundations. This model, differ this model differs from the for-profit scenario in that individuals, businesses, or foundations are supporting your work out of the kindness of their hearts because they believe you, your project, or the impact that you're trying to make in your community or on your audience. The large majority of these types of donations in the United States are made to nonprofit entities and have been granted 501c3 status by the IRS. Now, you can ask for donations from individuals or grants from foundations without having 501c3 status. And it's likely that your closest family members might make a small contribution or there are certainly some foundations that award grants to individual artists. But if you've done any fundraising before, 
you likely know that being able to offer individuals tax deductibility in exchange for their contribution can be a major incentive in getting donors to open up their wallets. And while there are institutions that award grants and fellowships to individuals or art collectives, you'll find that many more cor corporations and foundations will only support organizations that have the 501c3 status. Even if you do a little research into the process, you can find that it can be one, an expensive, and two, time-consuming process. Three, expensive, and that you'll probably want to consult with an attorney to file the appropriate paperwork with your state and with the IRS. And four, time-consuming in that it can sometimes take a long time for the moment, from the moment you decide to form an arts organization to the moment where the IRS finally declares that you are a 501c3 organization. I just wanna point out, not to mention the fact that forming a 501c3 is not for everybody. So let's say you're just an individual photographer who is trying to fundraise to support your next exhibition. Or you're not 100% sure that you've got a viable idea. Like, let's say you're a new theater company that wants to see if there's a demand in your community for your projects before committing to forming a nonprofit organization. Or your project isn't exclusively a charitable enterprise. Maybe you're a filmmaker who plans to shop around your project to commercial distributors, but also wants to get donations to start production on your movie. This is where Fractured Atlas comes in. Fractured Atlas and our fiscal sponsorship program is here to help. I just wanna point out before we get much further, I like to say that it's still, again, very nice to meet you all, even if this is in a digital setting. Um, I wanna share a little bit about myself. Um, I work with a team of 15 artists and art administrators who service our 66,000 plus members internationally. This includes around 4,000 fiscally sponsored artists and art projects or arts organizations. Uh, since 2002, we've helped artists raise over $128 million and 21 million of which was the last 12 months alone. Um, I wanna say that I've been with Fractured Atlas now for uh, there'll be three years in March, and it's been great. It really has been wonderful, mainly because I am a fellow artist myself. Um, I come from a theater background, and I am an actor here in New York City, and I also do voice work. So a lot of times when I'm helping people over the phone or when I'm answering uh, someone's email, I get it because I've been in projects or been in productions that are starting from the ground up, and they aren't, you know, everyone's not on Broadway. and I myself have tried to create my own art. So um, the feelings are mutual and I try to be as compassionate as I possibly can when I come encounter with each and every one of you. So this is all uh, good news and good stuff that I, I'm very, very comfortable and, and happy to share. So a little bit more about Fractured Atlas. We are a nonprofit tech company that works with artists. We create online solutions that help meet artists' businesses' needs that they can spend more time focusing on what's important, which is creating their art. To that end, our fiscal sponsorship program eliminates an important hurdle to fundraising, forming a 501c3 organization. With fiscal sponsorship, we extend some of the benefits Again, I'm gonna just reiterate, we extend some of the benefits of our 501c3 status so that artists and arts organizations can solicit tax deductible donations from individuals, corporate sponsorship, and grants from foundations, which would typically only otherwise be available to nonprofits. So this is great if you are, a, an individual artist trying to seek support for your art practice. B, a new or small arts organization that wants a training wheels period before deciding if you want to pursue your own nonprofit status. Or C, 
a for-profit arts enterprise that wants to seek both investors who plan to share in the profits of your work and nonprofit donors who want to make a tax deductible donation. The mechanism of fiscal sponsorship is that a donor or institution makes their contribution directly to the 501c3 organization. So in our case, a donor who wanted to support your work would make a credit card donation on our website or write a check out to Fractured Atlas. We then issue the donor a tax receipt and hold the donation in a fund restricted for your project's use. You then request the funds from us and we disperse them to you in the form of a grant. Now, I may be biased, but I happen to think that our fiscal sponsorship program is the best in the arts nonprofit sector. That said, we would still encourage you to shop around for fiscal sponsors to find an organization that will be the best fit for you and your work. Here are a few things for you to be aware of as you shop around. The first is that every fiscal sponsor is going to charge an administrative fee on donations that they process for the purposes of their work. Our fee is 7%. Most sponsors are going to charge somewhere between 5 and 10%. Our fee covers all costs associated with administering your sponsored fund. That's staff time, our website, bank fees, credit card processing fees, etc. 7% straight. And our fee is actually tiered. So the more money you raise, the lower the fee goes on check donations. We found that our 7% administrative fee actually represents a discount for new or small arts nonprofits. Unless you have dedicated accounting staff in place or automated systems to help you keep track of your income and expenditures, the cost of maintaining your 501c3 status with the IRS can eat up more than 7% of your contributed income. Another thing to keep in mind when, it, when evaluating potential fiscal sponsors is that all of them are going to maintain some level of oversight with regards to how you solicit donations and how donated funds are used. You'll also want to be clear with your sponsor regarding ownership of the work that you produce while sponsored. Uh, with Fractured Atlas, you maintain ownership over the work. But if you decide to enter a for-profit agreement, like let's say with outside investors or commercial distributors, we want to be kept in the loop and review these arrangements. So when it comes to oversight for your fundraising activities, we want to review and sign off on your written donor solicitation materials. Uh, this would include individual appeal letters, newsletters, e-blasts, web co website content. Anything that mentions Fractured Atlas or promises tax deductibility to your donors, we have to review it. We also want to review your crowdfunding campaigns. Luckily, we offer a crowdfunding platform as part of our fiscal sponsorship. Uh, staff will assist you in setting up your campaign and review it to ensure you have properly accounted for any goods you're offering in exchange for your donations. There are no additional fees for using this crowdfunding tool. Um, I'm, I have to just pause for a second and say I'm really excited. I was here when we launched our crowdfunding platform um, because we were affiliated with another platform and there was also there was an additional fee tagged on. So there was the external uh, crowdfunding platforms uh, fee, part of their fee, in addition to our 7% fee. And if anybody knows, you want as much as your uh, donated funds as you can possibly get. So this was really been a huge thing and a, and a huge uh, gift to our projects because the 7% remains and they don't have to worry about that. Grants. So I know someone asked earlier about a grant and I will definitely get to um, that specific question if this doesn't already cover it. 
the grants is a huge reason why uh, arts organizations, individual artists come and get fiscal sponsorship. It's, it's your key and your ticket to getting money that you normally just wouldn't have access to. So fiscal sponsorship can open the door to institutional funding like from foundations or corporations. Um, as with approvals of your individual solicitations and crowdfunding campaigns, we want to be involved when you apply for grants from these sources. Before you start looking at grants, however, I just want to make sure that you guys are aware of our grant eligibility, eligibility requirement. We require that all of our projects raise $1,000 before they are eligible to apply for grants through us. If you can show that you've raised $1,000 through contributed, not earned income, we may waive that requirement. And I just wanna just back up just a little bit. So when I say $1,000 from contributed, that means a donation. Um, that does not mean ticket sales. That does not mean merchandise sales. This means if you can prove that through, let's say you did a Kickstarter campaign and you raised a thousand dollars in that, if you can send the link to an expired crowdfunding campaign within the last two years, we will waive that and you can start applying through grants, uh, applying for grants through us. Let's say you had another uh, fundraising event and you can show us all the donations or show us that maybe you got a small local community grant that you didn't need fiscal sponsorship for at the time. If you can show us that award letter, we can waive the eligibility requirement. But I just wanna uh, reiterate, it is not earned income. Uh, you can also learn more about the grants process through our knowledge base and other webinars. We have an excellent grants webinar. I do see, it looks like someone in the chat is asking a question. Um, okay, so I'm gonna stop just to answer this really quick. Somebody's saying, what about a uh, grant already received? So if, if you've already gotten the check, if it's already been, um, like if you have it in your hand and this was before Fractured Atlas, then you can continue to process that check. Um, if you want this to be processed through us, just continue to know that um, it's, you're going to have a 7% fee assessed out of that check or out of that award. And we're going to have to see all of the paperwork that came with that. So at this point, if you're not fiscally sponsored and you have, if you have a grant, you're free uh, to process that and cash it and do what you need with it. Um, we're not liable for that yet because we weren't your fiscal sponsors at that time. But if you're saying no, I want you guys to process it so you can hold it in my available fund balance. I don't want to. I don't want the full responsibility of the taxes yet. Then there is a process that we need to uh, be taking place, and basically you would just email us and let us know. But it is possible. So you have two options. So I also want to get into fund releases um, and documentation. Uh, fund releases are the only way that you can receive your money after you've raised it. We do not uh, cut checks or we don't automatically uh, distribute or disperse money. You have to submit a fund release request. I'm actually gonna go back just a little bit. So with fund releases, um, when, when you become a fiscally sponsored project, everyone has access to their own login information and their own portal called their My Fiscal Sponsorship page. Um, it offers a toolbar of different icons that helps you get access to the things that you need. So uh, there is one button called a fund release or fund releases. And what you do is you click on that and you're able to submit a request form for any of your project related expenses that you need. So it'll say, it'll, the form will generate and it will ask you how much you're looking to request from us. So let's say you have $1,000 with us and you say, oh, I need to pay the um, printing company $200. So you're gonna enter in the $200. We have a drop box of unlimited uh, line items, very rare, do projects have to click other because we've covered so many bases because we've been involved with so many projects, but you will click um, the, line, the project expense item 
and it'll be something like marketing or it'll be printing the line item we have a drop down option for printing or something related to that or marketing you would click that and then click submit um, we do require documentation for large fund releases and generally that's $5,000 or more. However, on your very, very first large release, which is usually 30, at the $3,500 mark, we're going to ask for documentation. Documentation can consist of receipts or contracts. It can also consist of a quote. Let's say you saw something uh, that you're trying to buy and you don't have the money. That's why you're requesting it. So let's say you see something online and the quote is this much. You can screenshot that and upload that um, in your request form and then we'll release the money. Um, but that's usually, documentation is usually required for, again, the first time you request $3,500 or more and then after that $5,000 or more. However, because we are your fiscal sponsor and because we do um, have a responsibility and we do get audited, we have the right at any time to ask for documentation if something does seem egregious. The next part I want to get, get into is the annual report. Actually, just one more step before we get into annual report. I, I, I missed the <laughs> essential part of how you get your fund releases. So since we don't cash checks, uh, the first step will be to set up your EFT account with us. And basically, that's an electronic funds transfer account. And basically, you're just going to fill out a EFT form with your banking information uh, so we can transfer the money to that account after you submit your fund release request. All right, so now, annual reports. Annual reports are huge. It is a annual mandatory requirement that we um, have for all of our projects. It's April 1st of every year. It has been April 1st of every year for at least the past 10 years. And basically, it's just, a way that Fractured Atlas can see the progress of our projects, even if you just became fiscally sponsored. We want to get a, a bird's eye view. It's, it's a very general, easy uh, report to fill out. It, this has nothing to do with the IRS. We are not affiliated with the IRS. Um, don't feel like you know you have to get your taxes together to do this annual report. It's just it just falls around this time because we know that most people have already started getting their receipts together, compiling their records, and they have a clearer sense of how the previous year played out. So that's why we chose April 1st. But it's all it's gonna do is ask you a narrative section of the annual report saying how was your year, and you can explain what happened or what didn't happen. You can um, adjust or edit any of the numbers for the fund release requests that you submitted maybe in the year you you did take out $200 for that printing receipt, but then you decided I'm only gonna use $150 to go towards that printing bill and use $50 for the gas that we needed for the bus to get to the next venue. So this is the time to make those edits. There will be a spreadsheet and a way to switch and adjust and make those little minor uh, edits if you choose. Sometimes people have huge edits where they have requested thousands of dollars and they're saying, look, we didn't use it for any of that. We actually use it here. This is a way to kind of do a check and balance. It's also a way to include money that you received outside of Fractured Atlas. So this is your time to add your earned revenue. We just want to get a scope of, again, how our projects are doing, how they're fundraising, how they're meeting their needs, and if we're helping. So again, this has nothing to do with the tax season officially um, or anything. This isn't government-based or anything. This is just strictly a fiscal sponsorship requirement that we have. But speaking of taxes, uh, taxes are still your responsibility. Yes, we are your fiscal sponsors. Yes, if you raise $1,000 in 2019, we will hold those funds for you as long as you remain fiscally sponsored. Um, you will not receive a uh, 1099 or anything if you don't release those funds. The way the fiscal sponsorship 
tax or responsibility uh, mechanism goes is we hold the funds for you and anything that you release, if you release $600 or more within a year, we're going to issue out a 1099 MISC to you in the next year. So if you raised $1,000 in 2018 and you requested only $700 of that in 2018 to pay your project-related expenses, our projects just received last week, now that we're in 2019, a 1099 MISC for those fund release requests. So in your case, you, you would receive you would have received last week a 1099 MISC for $700, not the full $1,000. It is your responsibility to file that. We strongly suggest and advise that all of our projects link up with a tax advisor or an accountant to help them with this. Um, in your fund release request records, everything is at your disposal and you have access to all of that in your portal so you can print these things out to your accountant and tax advisor so you can offset uh, some of the costs or offset these expenses uh, that'll help you as you're filing but that's how the fiscal sponsorship uh, works when it comes to taxes we only issue out that 1099 MISC for the funds that you release from us um, not what you actually raised um, I also want to point out that with taxes, um, a lot of times people are constantly uh, looking to offset costs or they're not sure um, if they've maybe released enough. There is no enough or there isn't too much that you can release. Um, it's all about what you need for your project and what you're willing to actually pay and, 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 and do with your taxes, with your advisor uh, during that season. So we don't have a limit or we don't have a max about how much you can release. It, it doesn't matter to us either way. I also wanna talk about contractual relationship. So the contract between uh, yourself and your fiscal sponsor. A lot of times fiscal sponsors or people feel like is this mutually exclusive? I can't have another fiscal sponsor. A fractured atlas basically has a non-exclusive uh, contract with their projects. You can have multiple fiscal sponsors. Uh, we, we don't hold anybody uh, as what is it, captive <laughs> to being your lone fiscal sponsor. Um, a lot of times this works to the project's advantage because maybe there's a small community grant in your hometown outside of New York City that only awards projects with fiscal sponsors in that state that have been incorporated in that state. So if you wanted to become fiscally sponsored by that local fiscal sponsor, go have it. We want you to do the, as best as you can and, and raise as much money as you possibly can. So again, we're not exclusive and it won't be an issue. So how do we actually get fiscally sponsored? The agreement and application for sponsorship can be found on our website. And I'm just gonna walk you through some of the steps on getting fiscal sponsorship. So first, you wanna become a member of Fractured Atlas at one of our dues paying levels of membership. So if you can see on the screen, the community level is the free level. Um, it does allow you to apply for insurance. You do have access to Artfully, which is our uh, free ticketing software. And you have access to Space Finder, which is like our Google search for venues. Um, but if you wanna become fiscally sponsored, you would need to switch to the professional or organization level. So the professional level is $10 a month. That now allows you to purchase insurance. It only means that you have one user that has access to your account, and now you can apply for fiscal sponsorship. With the organization level, it's $20 per month. Again, you can purchase the insurance, and this allows three users to log in in your account and apply for fiscal sponsorship. I just wanna clarify that organization does not mean that you have to be incorporated as an actual organization. 
Organization and fractured Atlas fiscal sponsorship terms just means more than one, hence the three users. So do not uh, flip out and say, well, I'm not an organization, but I need three. It's just um, a term that we're using casually under our fiscal sponsorship program uh, member tier. All right, so with the application, um, it's important to understand that there's really only two parts. There is the artistic component, and number two, the public benefit. Artistic component meaning, what discipline of art are you supporting? Is it dance? Is it theater? Is it visual arts? Is it music? It needs to be artistic. It cannot be construction building. It cannot be anything outside of the arts. Number two, with the public benefit, this may seem like a no-brainer, but basically, um, sometimes we get applicants or people who, they're artists, but they're really just trying to raise money for themselves to create art that they'll never show to the world. It's for their own uh, self-gratification, and maybe they're just working on something that, they, that they've wanted to do for years, but they have no intention of sharing this with anyone else. So what we do is we can't approve that type of project, but we do try to support um, artists that are putting these, this great work out into the community and changing society in a way. So those are the two biggest uh, components that we're looking for. I will say that there are, of course, other app questions. There is a, a rudimentary budget. And when I say uh, rudimentary, it is, it is truly a basic budget. Um, if you don't have a full budget yet, do not be alarmed. You can enter zero or, you know, basically leave as much blank. It's only what's applicable. Do not get freaked out by the budget. We're just trying to get an idea again of the size and the scope of your project. We want to know are you a project uh, that's starting from scratch or your project who's been around for some years and may have a mid mid-level budget or maybe been around for decades and you just haven't gotten fiscally spot or haven't gotten your 501c3 status and you're dealing with a large budget. We need to know how we can assist you based off of the basic budget uh, that we provide. The other app questions are are there any outside investors involved? Again, uh, we just want to get an idea of who's helping you with your work. Uh, this does not eliminate you at all from receiving fiscal sponsorship. It's just so we can get an idea. A few other questions, uh, but you can fill it out pretty fast. It usually doesn't take more than 20 minutes, I've heard. Uh, from some of our projects who've gotten through, I've had calls with people in the morning and they said, okay, I'm gonna fill out the application and they've gotten it in well before lunch and it, it didn't take them that long at all. Please note, Fractured Atlas's fiscal sponsorship application is not currently screen reader compatible. We are hard at work improving the application's accessibility, but in the meantime, if you use a screen reader and are having a hard time accessing the application, please do not hesitate to contact us at either support at fracturedatlas.org or 888-692-7878. And we will definitely work with you to ensure that you can apply. The last part after you do submit your application is our board review. The board review uh, is a quick, I should say it's relatively quick compared to, we used to have a month period that everyone had to wait up to, to four weeks. Now it's one to two weeks. Um, again, we've had projects approved within less than a week. It just depends on how fast our board can actually review all the incoming applications. But at this point, um, the general time frame to be safe is one to two weeks. And that's it. Um, again, it's a pretty, pretty simple process. We try to create so many tools that are accessible to all of our projects to help you along the way. Um, before I open up any questions, I do want to quickly plug the other programs and services that we offer to artists. 
As I mentioned before, Artfully. Artfully is an online system to manage your tickets, donations, and contacts. It is simple and it's an elegant way to keep track of events, people, and your everyday work. You can sell tickets on your site or through an Artfully storefront. You can sync MailChimp lists and contacts, provide ticket buyers and donors with automatic email receipts, among other things to make and manage tickets and patrons. It's very popular. Artfully works with fiscally sponsored projects, so you can track your donors and other fans in the same place. It's a great way to start understanding your audience and managing your segments. Space Finder, another thing I mentioned. Um, for artists, the process of finding workspace can be frustrating and inefficient. I know because I lived in New York City and finding space is a hot commodity. Um, meanwhile, venues have limited resources to spend finding new renters. Earned revenue is critical for creative venues, yet many rental spaces are, are tragically underutilized. Through the Space Finder program, Fractured Atlas is increasing visibility of rental options, helping artists find the space they need and helping venues promote and rent their spaces. Just want to point out there are over 5,000 spaces listed and 554,000 searches for every space every year. There are also $800,000 plus annual rental referrals to participating creative venues. Our list is always growing. Business insurance. So this is another huge one for us. Uh, thanks to the combined purchasing power of the Fractured Atlas community, our members have access to high quality coverage for much lower rates than would otherwise be possible. More importantly, with one foot in the arts and another in the world of insurance, we've worked with some of the world's leading insurance companies to design a number of proprietary insurance programs that are specifically tailored to meet your specific needs. We've even made the process as quick and painless as possible. So now that I've given you the whole rundown for Fractured Atlas, I'm now open for questions. I do see that we already have some in the hopper. I'm going to go through and read a couple, and I'm going to see if there are any that I covered, and maybe I can just add on to, or if there are any new ones. So give me one second. All right. So... Okay, so this was this question is going back to the $1,000 eligibility requirement. So the question is, do I need to do a crowdfunding project uh, to get the $1,000 before I apply uh, for grants through Fractured Atlas, or can I instead obtain funding from family and local businesses? Excellent, excellent question. So the minute that you become fiscally sponsored, you automatically have a donation page you could absolutely 100% get to that $1,000 mark by just receiving individual donations. So if the first day that you become fiscally sponsored and you share your link with your friends and family and you raise $1,000, automatically we'll see that. And once you apply for a grant, we won't even ask you about the eligibility requirement because we see that it's already in the portal. If you've raised $1,000 from a local business or from family and friends prior to that, again, we just need proof of that. So if a local business sent you a check and more than likely there was some type of correspondence like an email or a letter that came with that, we would just need you to forward that to us. If there are family friends of some sort, they can write a letter saying I donated this or if you have a, a, some type of record of that, maybe a bank transcript or sometimes people still have a copy of that check, we just need proof of that. So there are de definitely different ways. Um, it does not have to be through a crowdfunding uh, platform. All right, so I'm going to move on to the next question. So someone wants me to go over the items uh, that Fractured Atlas must review prior to sending out funding requests to potential sponsors. So again, we're just asking, it depends on what you're actually requesting. Um, every review is different. If you are 
trying to apply for a grant, we do have a breakdown of what we look for in a grant review process. Let's say you, you've met the requirement. In general for grants, we ask that you send us the application, the website, or if it's a, a login application, the login information. Everything that's required of the grant, we ask that you send us first. If you are asking for um, sponsorship out of uh, maybe a local a corporate corporation and you want to send that letter out, that would be considered a, a corporate solicitation letter. We need to see that letter. We need to see anything, any type of solicitation that you're sending. We need to review that first. So I hope that that gives you a, a general sense. There is no um, definitive list uh, for what we're um, looking for in terms of everything, because every request is different, every solicitation is different. But in, in just if you can get it in your mind, if I'm asking for money and I'm saying donate to Fractured Atlas, send it to support at fracturedatlas.org. I'm gonna go on to the next question. Okay, so this is really good. Are pledges on Patreon accepted as a legitimate form of funding? We are currently funded by Patreon. So Patreon, uh, we, we are familiar with Patreon. If these are donations, and if you can prove that you have received these donation, donations from Patreon, then yes, you can send that over to us. And that, that's proof. That's another platform, again, another external platform that's showing that you've raised this money. Um, if it's something where Give me one second, it looks like we got disconnected, but we're coming back. Can everyone hear me? Can anyone raise a hand? Okay, great. Awesome, thank you so much. Okay, so as I was saying, if you can prove that those contributions if you can prove that those contributions are, are definitely, I'm sorry, it looks like something else happened to my screen. If you can prove that those are um, contributions that came into fruition and they're not just pledges, then yes. All right, I'm going to go to another set of questions. All right, so uh, how is 1099 reported on the tax return and expenses reported against it uh, by Schedule C if individual? So very, very good question. I do want to rewind back and just say, um, we only issue out 1099 NISCs to individuals or LLCs. We do not issue out 1099s to corporations. Um, we do, again, we strongly suggest if you receive these funds that you're keeping records, if you're already incorporated, as a corporation and that you do still report this, it's just best practices and it's legal, um, but we only issue it out to individuals and LLCs. Um, in terms of how it's reported on your tax return, it's listed as other. This is not listed as um, compensation or salary or anything. It's not listed as a compensation. Fractured Atlas is not paying you. Uh, again, it's listed as other and the other part of that question is an expense is reported against it. This goes back again to the uh, record, how you're, how you're maintaining your records. So we're gonna give you the 1099. And so since you submitted a fund release request the previous year, again, those line items that you submitted in the form, you'll have that as a record that you can give to your tax advisor. And if you have the receipts that you've held on, that's a way to offset some of those expenses. And this works if you're an individual or LLC or any legal entity for that matter, because you'll be able to print this off and you'll be able to back it up. I hope that clarifies. 
Let's see the next question. Are there restrictions for what we can use funds for? Very good question. Someone is saying that they would like to pay one of their artists for a rehearsal and performance time, but the language and some grants uh, that they're looking at are suggesting that funds cannot be used to pay artists. Okay, so there's two things here. I'm gonna answer the first part of the question. So in terms of paying, so again, we have a very, very broad scope of how you can use uh, your funds to cover any most, most likely nine times out of 10 most project related expenses. Yes, you can pay your artists for rehearsals. Yes, you can pay them for performance time. Uh, there is a Dropbox uh, item for that. However, with grants, let's say you receive this grant award and we process that award for you. It is gonna go, that money is gonna go into a general fund. So there is, technically there is no way, if you, if you release those funds, there's no way to decipher which money it's being pulled from if you already had money in there. But we strongly suggest that you follow the guidelines of your grants. We have to sign up. We have to sign off on and review all of your grant agreements before we can even process your checks. So the short answer, if you, let's say you didn't receive the grant, that's kind of a, a two-fold situation there. Let's say you didn't receive a grant and you just received individual funds or donations. Yes, you can pay your artists for their time. Um, if you have this grant separate from us, uh, we suggest that you abide by those rules of the grant. But in the terms of when the grant is received and the, pro and the check is processed by Fractured Atlas, it's going to go into the, to your fund, your available fund balance with all your other donations. So there's no way to, to technically separate that. I hope that clears that up. I will say just to add to that, most grants, if they have a specification like that, they are going to ask for an annual report at the end. They are gonna ask for an annual report within a year asking you how you spent your funds and you can break down specifically how you use their funds um, and let them know I did use, let's say you got $5,000, I did use 2,500 for this, I did use you know, another 2,000 for this and another 500 for that. You can break down specifically what it did go to. And obviously you wouldn't say the thing that they ask you not to do. Um, but in terms of how it all comes to us, it's gonna go in one pot. Okay. All right, I've got a couple more. So can you offer services fee for service and receive payment for them without going through Fractured Atlas, or is this considered donations too? So if you are offering a service and again, you're receiving a fee, that's, that's earned revenue. That's considered, that's no different from you selling a ticket. So that would not get processed through Fractured Atlas. It only has to be a donation. That, it sounds like, uh, you know, let's say you're going to a spa and, and there's a fee for a service. That's considered earned revenue. That's not a contribution because they're getting something in return. So the short part of that question, again, is no, it doesn't have to go through Fracture Atlas because we only process contributions. Okay. And now I see we have one more question. Okay, very good. So this is, what is the difference between a fiscally sponsored project and a fiscally sponsored LLC? Well, fiscally sponsored project only just means that you're an individual artist, you are a small organization, or you are a large organization that is fiscally sponsored by Fractured Atlas. The difference is, is that the project, let's say you're the individual artist, let's say you're one of the three, the legal entity is the LLC. So I am Jane, I'm Jane Doe, I am an individual artist, so 
the project, I am the project, and I am an individual sole proprietor. That is my legal entity, legal entity status. Let's say Tom next to me, he has a small art service, a small theater company. The small theater company is the project, but his legal entity status is an LLC. So I hope that clears that up um, on what that is. Project, it's not that uh, fiscally sponsored project and, and LLC are the, are the same. It's just the project is the very work that you're doing, is the very company or individual, and the LLC is your tax um, identification number or whatever legal entity status you are choosing to uh, go forward and register with. So please let me know if that cleared your question. That was a very, very good one. All right, so I'm gonna answer these last two. I see the two more uh, popped up. Uh, it's in the same vein, it's saying, if I create an LLC, I don't ever have to get a 501c3 if I use Fractured Atlas to process donations. So again, you can be an individual, you can be an LLC, or you can be a 501c3 organization yourself. We do actually have fiscally sponsored projects who are 501c3s. It's whatever uh, you decide. We cannot advise or we don't advise. We are not professional tax advisors. We don't know what you're going to need um, in, in terms of operating or facilitating your work. So that's a decision you're going to have to make with your group or, or within yourself if you're solo. But I would strongly suggest um, speaking with an accountant on this. Um, you can receive donations through us regardless if you are an LLC or not, or a 501c3 or not. We just need, I wanted, I'll go back to the application. We just need, of course, you know, for you to be artistic and have the public benefit but we need a tax ID associated with this. So whether it's your social security number or an employer ID number, either way, you can still get your donations processed through Fractured Atlas. All right. Okay, I'm going to do one, uh, two more. Uh, so the next question is for our projects, can we use Fractured Atlas so that we can offer people who donate a tax receipt and also use services like Patreon, GoFundMe, or does using Fractured Atlas require that we are exclusive? So basically you're wondering if you use these other platforms, and I think this is what I'm getting, can you issue a tax receipt? Short answer is no. So we have our own platforms, we have our own crowdfunding platforms so that our projects don't have to use GoFundMe or Patreon. Um, and we issue a, a tax receipt through our crowdfund, crowdfunding platform that we host. If you are not using our crowdfunding platform and you're using our regular donation landing page that you have access to, the minute you become fiscally sponsored, we issue out a tax receipt. So on our end, there is no need for any external uh, platforms, but let's say you, you want to use another platform outside of ours, um, in addition to being fiscally sponsored, let's say you, you like something on Patreon or let's say you, you like another crowdfunding platform, by all means, we cannot stop you. We just won't be able to issue a tax receipt. Um, none of the funds that you raise on the external platform will show up in your available fund balance and we will, and you will be solely responsible for all the tax uh, responsibilities that come with that. Uh, the next question and the last question, do I need to keep a minimum balance in my account at all times? So no, you can, we have projects who they become fiscally sponsored, they're charged, they're ready to go, and they don't raise money for months. That is perfectly fine. As long as you uh, continue to be a dues paying member, you will always have your fiscal sponsorship. The minute that you send us an email and say, I'd like to close down my sponsorship, or I'd like to switch to the free community level, that is when your fiscal sponsorship gets closed. Other than that, it can take you as long as, as you need until you raise money. So we do not have a monitor on, uh, or a minimum balance for how much money needs to be raised for our projects. 
So I'm gonna, if there aren't any more questions, you guys asked some really, really great questions, actually. And I'm so happy that everybody was on and, and it seems like people are charged to start the new year off productive and, and positive. But I don't have anything else to offer tonight. I think we covered so much ground. I would uh, implore that everyone check out our orientation webinar and that's after you become fiscally sponsored, but if you aren't fiscally sponsored and you still have some uh, nitty gritty questions or still wanna hear a little bit more before you make that decision, that does break down the grant process a little bit more. That does break down some of the solicitation processes um, more. That does break down uh, the tax responsibilities. It's a more in-depth version, it's the part two version of this. This is just a general overview. Um, but again, some of the questions that you guys asked it shows that you guys are already on the ball. So if there's nothing else that, um, any burning questions or anything else, uh, any concerns, you can definitely send us questions at support at fracturedatlas.org or call us and we'll be more than happy to assist you. I hope everybody has a wonderful and fabulous 2019 and I hope to speak to some of you all either via email or on the phone. Everyone take care. Good night. <laughs>